All right. In this part, we're going to actually light our scene, and we're going to use the same kind of lighting uh, environment that we have in Substance Painter. So let's go back to Substance Painter real quick. And in here, you can see the type of lighting we have. It's all based off the image in the environment. Now, in, yours might be a little blurred. So if you go to Viewer Settings and play with the Environmental Blur, you might have something that may look like this. And that's fine, but if you actually want to see the environment that's lighting the scene, you just drop that blur down to zero. Now, this image is being used to light it. And what's happening is that every pixel in this image is a light source shooting onto our object to give us a sense of reality. Because that's what happens. Light travels everywhere. And that's what this image is providing. That light is coming from every direction and hitting our object. And that object is just reflecting that light back to us in a realistic manner. Because light comes in all directions, no matter how minute it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab one of these images from Painter and put it inside of Maya to light with Mental Ray. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up an IBL. An IBL is basically image-based lighting that you see like Painter. So we're just using an image to light the scene, and for short, IBL. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to come up to Create, Lights, right down here, Environmental Image, IBL. Click on it. It brings in this sphere right here. And this sphere is where we're going to map on to our, our image onto. So we're going to go to image name in the attribute editor, go to the folder. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to program files, algorithmic, substance painter, resources, shelf, algorithmic environments. So basically you go into the C drive, go to program files, algorithmic. Uh, Substance Painter, Resources, Shelf, Algorithmic again, and then a folder called Environments. And then here you can choose all the different environments. If you go on the internet and type in IBL, Images, you can go to images and oh, that's not what I was looking at. Image based lighting. That's what we're looking for. Here we go. So these are different environments that you can download to use to light your scenes. And you can see all the different images that have been rendered using IBLs. There's a cool one right here few cool ones right here. Now there's are, are certain formats that do better than others and Substance Painter has some good ones so EXR files which are these have are able to hold a lot of color information in them and that's why they're used quite a bit because the formatting uh, the bit depth on them are, is so large. Uh, enough of that and we're gonna go and I'm gonna grab the bus garage and I'm gonna hit open and that's gonna load there we are. So I'm going to kind of zoom in and I'm going to duplicate our crate here. So I'm going to select the group, hit control D, move it over. And then I'm also going to rotate this. I'm going to hold the J key and rotate it. So I want to be able to see one side of it and then the other. So the front, the side, and a little bit of the top. So when you render it out, I'm able to see all the sides in one frame. So make sure you duplicate your object enough where I can see different angles of your object so we only need to do one render. The other thing is we want to check our render settings. So if we come up to render settings up here at the top, we want to go to common and we want to make sure 
we're using some kind of HD quality. So 960 by 540 right now for speed purposes. I think the project asks for 1080, which is right here. So for right now, for me to you know do some quick renders, I'm going to have it at half HD. But for your project, you want to go to 1080. Once you've done that, that's fine. Um, for image format, you'll probably want this to be in a JPEG for final output. And let's see what else we got. I think everything else is pretty much ready to go. We'll have to come back into quality and change some settings. But right now, we're just seeing how everything is coming together. So once we've gotten our image in, and I, we've got you know different duplicates of our objects, we kind of frame it up. Uh, we might even want to bookmark this. So if we ever want to come back to this exact angle uh, for rendering, if we come up to this little bookmark right here, right click and say create bookmark. Now it's made a bookmark. So if I move anywhere else and I want to get back to that same camera position, all I have to do is right. Um, oh, looks like it didn't work. Right here. I want to create bookmark. I'll click it. And then now, if I move anywhere else, I can say viewport or uh, camera view, and it snaps right back to it. Let's get a little bit tighter and click that again. All right, now that we've got that set up, let's render it. So we're going to come up to the top, bring up the render view, and then hit the render button. So again, those are those icons up there. It takes a little bit of time to do that. So I paused the video and I let it render. It took about 52 seconds to render this image at default settings. So it's looking pretty good. Um, you can see it does a pretty good job rendering it out. It, it does get a little speckly on the sides here. And that's just, we have to start playing with our samplings and our quality to get a little bit better result. So we'll, we're gonna play with that. But first, uh, let's um, get rid of the background. Uh, the background is doing fine. Uh, again, it's lighting our scene up, but I don't want to actually see it as an image in in the um, uh, final output. We just want to use it for lighting, but not for actual aesthetics. So I'm just going to hide the render stats and hide the render view. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually kind of write, kind of just hover over and click on the IBL node or you can come to the outliner and click on mental right IBL and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it temporarily hide for displaying but not for lighting so once we selected that what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the shape node of that IBL so this mental ray IBL shape node and we're gonna go to render stats drop that down and then right here where it says primary visibility, it's turned on. We're gonna turn that off. So when we actually render it, it's not gonna show up. The other thing is our background for our camera is black. So we need to change that. So if we go up to the top here and click select camera, we're actually selecting the camera. And when we scroll down in the attribute editor, we come to environment, click on that. And right now our background color is going to be black. So basically we'll get the correct lighting on our objects, but the whole background is going to be completely pitch black. I want a little bit of a gray value there. Let's make it a little bit lighter right there. All right. So let's bring up the render view again. I'm going to save this out for comparison reasons and I'm going to re-render it. So I'm going to pause the video and um, I'll be back in a few seconds with the render. Now we're back and you can see the result. See, got rid of the background and then also we changed the background color. So if I want to go a little bit darker, I can go a little darker with that background color. And then we don't have that image also. So it's looking pretty good, but now we need to get the quality of the render up. Right now it's still taking about 44 seconds for it to actually render this scene. And the more we increase the quality, the longer this is going to take. It might take actually several minutes for it to render properly. So let's bring up the render settings because we really want the best quality possible. So overall quality, 
typically you can go from 1.6 to 1 to get some pretty decent results I like using 1 uh, but point, uh, 0.6 between 0.6 and 7 um, you really are able to really start cleaning up all the little jaggedness and the noise that's happening in the scene. It does a really good job. The other one is lighting environment. Um, lighting quality is actually set to uh, one. You can increase that to like um, two or three and that gets a little bit better on the lighting. So I'm just going to increase that into two. And then in lighting and uh, environment lighting, again, that's just using uh, the environment that we have. Um, again, the lighting that we have right now, we don't have any Maya lights. It's the environment, actually. So this actually you want to drop that down back to one. So excuse me on that one. Um, you want to use the environment line because we're using the IBL. This you want to increase that to one. And that does a pretty good job. Um, and then if we want to get a little bit better sharpening of our image you want to get some nice crisp lines this is where filtering comes in and typically I like using Mitchell it does a really good job just by defaulting the Mitchell and leaving the filter size to 4 to 4 it usually does a pretty good job but understand these settings will make the image look better but it will take longer to render so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna render it and then we'll see the result from that so I'm back and you can see the difference here's the finished render and then here's the render with the lower settings so you can see the quality in the and the kind of the extra noise at the lower resolution but again takes less than a minute to render and in this one with the more polished settings the higher settings you can see it's a lot cleaner but it took six minutes over six minutes to render so Again, when you're getting closer to your final output and you're liking the results of your lighting, then you want to increase your overall quality. So again, overall quality I recommend is anywhere from 0.6 to 1. Uh, lighting quality, again, you're not using any Maya lighting or lights, so you can leave that set to 1. But environmental lighting, I would recommend to 1. And then filtering set to Mitchell, and you can get something that looks pretty decent. Now, all you have to do is go to File, Save Image, and then make sure you save it as a JPEG, and then render it out, or save it out. So that's pretty much how you would um, set up a scene to be rendered in Maya. Also, how to set up your shaders for PVR, and then how your outliner should look like. I might even reorganize this a little bit so it actually changes position here there we go Ooh, this thing does not want to play there we go so this is the high poly somewhere again I put it on a display layer right there and then you got your two low polys one from showing each angle of the sci-fi crate and that's what should be in your scene when you turn it in another thing to make sure that you also have your image based lighting in the Maya project directory in the source images folder so again we grabbed it from the C drive and but that doesn't mean necessarily that every computer is going to have this image in the exact same location so we all we need to make sure we grab that image that we're using for the background and put it in our Maya project. So let's go and click on the IBL, and if we go to the attribute editor and go to the uh, I, mental ray IBL shape node and go to the image name, you can see it's sitting somewhere on the C drive. It's not sitting in a Maya project directory because that's not where we grabbed it. So we need to make sure we get it, make a copy of this and put this in our Maya project directory. So I'm just going to come over here, grab, go to the folder, and then um, bus garage. I'm just going to right click it. I'm going to copy it. All right. And then I'm going to bring up my Maya project directory. So here it is. I'm going to go to source images. And in here, I'm going to paste it in. There it is. So I copied it over. And now let's reassign the IBL node to that texture. So I'll hit the 
folder again. Um, I'll go to wherever it is sitting on my computer. And there it is. And then I'll click on it and open it. And there you are. Now it is looking at the proper space in my Maya project directory. So again, always set your Maya project directory. Make sure it's working properly before you turn it in because if it's not, you will get docked for the textures not loading in correctly. So you've got to double check your work. All right. Um, hopefully you guys uh, learned a lot and um, I hope to see some good projects.